spent the night in Dickinson and this morning got up and went to the Dinosaur Museum. Destiny from the North Dakota Tesla Owners Group works at the Dinosaur Museum and was able to give us a fantastic behind the scenes tour. Hi, my name is Destiny Wolf. I am a volunteer fossil preparator and board member here at the Dickinson Museum Center and the Badlands Dinosaur Museum. So we actually have two different collections here at our museum. We have the historic collection, which was collected way back when, many years ago, by the museum founders, uh, the leagues. And we have the new collection, which is everything in the past five or so years that Dr. Denver Fowler, our museum paleontologist and curator, has found. And that's a lot of what we're also working on here in the lab these days. We run a camp of about 15 to 20 people that go out every summer for about two to three months and dig up new fossils. To then come back to here in the lab, we can clean them up under a better controlled environment, and then we um, are able to research them, write papers on them, and then eventually put them on display for everybody to enjoy. So those formations that we primarily dig in would be the Judith uh, River Formation along with the Hell Creek Formation. And so when you're thinking of those formations, you're actually thinking of a lot of the really cool uh, dinosaurs that most people typically think of, like Tyrannosaurs and Triceratops. And just this year alone, we, we have had at least one new species, and we may have a couple more in the works. One thing I love about this place is there's something for every age group. There's some really deep stuff, and then there's some stuff for, for kids to get their heads around. So what's the thought process that goes into that as you're you know, creating the displays and stuff to, to make it friendly for every range of interest? A big part of our mission here at the museum is public service and what can we give back. And we do that in a couple ways. We do that through education and outreach in terms of having school groups come in from the area. We also do it thanks to COVID in a lot of ways, through a lot of Zoom um, interactions with classrooms. And we've had classrooms as far away as Seattle and actually over into the UK who have tuned in to us. As far as our museum display goes, we really try and make sure that there is something for every single age group and every single interest as much as possible. We know that blended families are coming in here, multi-generational families are coming in to visit our museum. And so we want to make sure that we sort of have a little bit of something for everyone. We're really happy that our interactive displays are back. So whether that's our microscope or our interactive geological sandbox where people can make floods and rivers and landslides and have all that sort of interaction, we really try and think about everybody when we when we think about how to create our gallery. And if you see us walking through a gallery, ask us a question and say, hey, I'm wondering if you can tell me more about this specimen or where this was found or how this was dug up. We love those types of questions when we go through. And we really want people to have an interactive experience and to see something new and learn something new with every pass through our building. Yeah, it's very cool and very, neat to see up close. I mean, you can get right up to next to these windows and really not look over your shoulder, but look right into your workspace yeah. and see what's going on. So that's fantastic. Well, the museum is fascinating. So thank you very much for this behind the scenes look and the tour. Uh, but you have something else that's really cool in the parking lot, and that is a couple EV charging stations. So let's go outside and check those out. Perfect. Let's go. Out in the parking lot here, you guys have two level two chargers. Yep. And I'm just curious, did you get put those in or did you lobby to have them installed? And does anybody use them? 
the idea of the chargers, contrary to popular belief, actually wasn't my idea. It was actually the idea of our paleontologist curator, Dr. Denver Fowler, who's here at our museum full time. And Denver wanted to attract a, a new, different kind of crowd. He knew that electric cars are, are the way that things are moving. And what better way than to have people be able to park, charge for a couple hours, and have a reason to stay and not be rushed through the museum on their travels through. Sure, I suppose it works both ways. You get some charge, but you also know I have the time to enjoy the museum. Absolutely, yeah. So how long have these been installed? So my husband and I actually um, donated the charger itself. The install itself was actually uh, very generously donated uh, by the Lignite Coal Council here in North Dakota that's based out of Bismarck. And so we actually... Seems ironic, but... <laughs> hey, we got to sell works. coal to somebody, right? Yeah, yeah. And so we still do get a percentage of our um, generated power here in North Dakota from coal. Thankfully, as you know, that's decreasing every year for the environment's sake. But yeah, they were generous enough to pay for the install. Cool. So the chargers have been up here for just over a year. And we thought it was really important because as much as Tesla has come through Dickinson and put in chargers across the I-94 corridor, we still didn't have any generics for people that wanted to travel through. And even our CVB office was getting to the point where they were fielding calls on where can I charge my leaf coming through sure. town? And the answer was, we don't know. Yeah, now this is a perfect answer. And you also have a couple other facilities here. It's not just the Dinosaur Museum, although that's the coolest part. Um, what are some of the other things that are right around this area within walking distance? Yeah, so people typically come to the museum center. The big draw is our dinosaurs. We're a big research facility and we're actually a federal repository and we're quite proud of that status. So here at the museum center we also have a history side collections. We also have the Pioneer Machinery Building that's housed and, and serviced thanks to the Stark County Historical Society. Our Convention and Visitors Bureau is right in the same parking lot, so if people want to find out what to do here in Dickinson or where to go eat, that's right within walking distance. Across the way, we do have some fast food services, so we have a McDonald's that's really convenient to here. We have a couple hotels within walking distance, especially since none of our hotels here offer charging services. We have gladly, um, through the city of Dickinson, we've gotten an agreement to be able to leave these chargers on 24 seven. And thankfully we haven't had anybody abuse that. Well, thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed seeing the museum and uh, getting a free charge while we were here, while we're on our trip. So Absolutely. thank you very much. All right, no problem. Fossils, not fossil fuels. Another huge thank you to Destiny for the tour, time, and the special gifts for Joan. I'll be publishing my full interview with her in the next few days. We talk more about the chargers, their install, and she answers some of my dinosaur and fossil questions I've had since I was seven. After that amazing morning, there was only one other thing bothering me, that chip in the windshield. But like I said, the North Dakota Tesla owners go above and beyond. As I was setting up our interview, Destiny actually called the glass place to let them know we were coming and asked to fit us in before we left town. We drove a few blocks to Just In Glass. They were expecting us and had me pull right in. As they filled the chip with resin, Michael fed Joan and they played and sang songs in the yard behind the shop. I was mostly talking to the staff who hadn't seen a Model Y before. I showed them around, all the storage space and some of the basics of the screen. Friendly and helpful staff and I'm so grateful for their quick attention and again, Destiny's coordination. 40 minutes and $40 later, the chip was filled and we were back on the road. Next stop, Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Pausing here for a PSA the Boy Scout in me can't resist. 
Do not feed the animals in a national park, even the cute little ones. Notice how they're all coming onto and across the road? No one wants to see squished prairie dogs, which is what we saw elsewhere in the park. Drawing them to the road and to people is irresponsible and we're supposed to be adults here. End rant. to get out of Dickinson about 12.30 and hit the road. And as we were driving, we had some pretty big headwinds. So instead of going straight to Miles City, uh, we took a little detour through Teddy Roosevelt National Park, did a little drive, saw some buffalo and some great scenery there. And then plowed in through Montana and fighting the wind, we had to stop in Glendive just to make sure we could keep our speed up. Arriving at the Holiday Inn Express with 29%, we plugged in and checked the lobby restrooms, but they were either locked or very occupied by someone for a while. So we hit a convenience store on the way out of town. Another family from Minnesota was also headed west, and we tailed them most of the rest of the day. After 23 minutes of snacking, we had plenty of charge for the high speeds, winds, and elevation changes on the way to Miles City. Even though we're at 37 percent, 180 kilowatts, still cruising up, and settled it. That was kind of the top there, but still good rates. And uh, gonna be here about a half an hour. We're still fighting the wind, so I'm gonna check the navigation, see what it suggests. A better route planner said we needed to be about 88 percent, so we'll see what Tesla thinks. Not much play area here, so Michael and Joan sat in the shade of the car for a snack. The glass place left us one final task on the crack repair. After the resin had had a few hours of curing in the sunlight, I needed to use the razor blades they gave me to cut off the excess resin and stickers to make the windshield flush again. It's hard to see the finished product because my phone wanted to focus on the dash, but although you could still see the chip, it held and kept the crack from spreading. 31 minutes later. All right, we're at 91, and we're gonna stop charging, because that should be plenty. up here just over 100 kilowatts that's pretty good for here um, I think it's only 150 kilowatt supercharger we'll see if we work our way up I might try the wet towel trick but we'll see how long we need to be here the long summer afternoons are deceptive and I didn't realize it was 6:45 by the time we got to Billings add in the time change and our stomachs thought it was almost 8 p.m. I'd broken the rules of traveling with a mogwai, I mean child, and we needed dinner fast. Thinking like an adult, I'd figured we'd just have a nice dinner at one of the nearby restaurants, but they seemed too nice and too slow to satisfy an angry gremlin who wouldn't have the patience to sit in a booth for a half hour. 
Instead, we walked to the holiday station and found some chicken salad and other to-go items. By the time we left, she'd eaten enough to settle down, but we were all getting tired, so the drive to Bozeman was relatively calm as we saw our first real mountain views at sunset. Maybe? Starting charge, maybe? Here we go. We do not need to be here till that high, so to give it a break, I think tonight I'm just gonna go to 75% and then we'll find our hotel. And that way it's not sitting so high overnight. The last of a beautiful sunset sank behind the hills as we charged. 460 miles from Dickinson, sightseeing and the dinner drama had worn us out. The 22-minute charging stop was a good top-up for the evening, but we were eager to get to the hotel. Ellie was flying in in the morning, and we were excited to start fresh and head to Glacier. We slept in and needed it. Then I went out to repack the car and realized how badly we'd overpacked. We left enough space for a person or luggage, but not both. Some creativity got us there by using all of the under trunk space, breaking down some boxes, and packing the cooler full. Even if it didn't need to be cold, if it fit, food and snacks went in. It was good to start fresh and be a bit more organized, at least for the moment. That took us longer than planned, so we checked out and headed straight to the airport. Ellie was waiting as we pulled up. Just to be sure we wouldn't have any problems getting to Helena, we hit the superchargers in Bozeman one more time. Good morning, it's about 10.30 here in Bozeman, and the idea was to stop here before we got my wife, but uh, her flight came in a little early, it took us a little longer to pack, and so we could have made it to our next stop, but since we're going up into the mountains and want to stop at different sightseeing places, uh, scenic overlooks, that kind of thing, we wanted to make sure we had plenty of charge, so we stop back here for a few minutes to reset, get everything organized, and then we're going to hit the road. First order of business while that's taking place, though, is to get those bugs off the windshield because it is nasty, as I'm sure you've seen in some of the other footage. together finally. Joan in her blanket, mom doing her crochet, and Uncle Michael playing, hiding, hiding, playing. Driving in Helena with 37% proves we definitely didn't need to charge again in Bozeman that morning, but with all of us together in a new area, I was playing it safe. It was time for lunch, so a good time to be at the Super One Foods. We ate in the windy parking lot, and between that, bathrooms and diapers, the charge was done before us, so we moved to another spot until we were ready to roll. With Ellie driving in about 98% charge, 
we were ready to leave the supercharger network. Tony in the mountains, Uncle Michael in the mountains, Mommy in the mountains. That's a treat. How are you doing, Joan? You having fun? Hello and welcome to Kalispell, Montana. We are excited to be here, finally in the depths of the mountains and really enjoying the scenery so far. The hotel here, it's a Best Western and it has a charge point destination charger, level two. And right now there is a beautiful black performance model Y charging and a gorgeous Porsche Taycan, I believe it's a Turbo S. The Model Y is from Oregon and the Taycan is, I believe, Colorado. So exciting to see more EVs here, but they are using the chargers currently. So with only two plugs in the parking lot, it's a little dicey since we got here with 10%, but we're fine, we can wait a while. The weather is beautiful. We don't have anything to worry about as far as too much phantom drain. But to illustrate just how popular EVs are becoming, especially the Tesla Model Y, Right after we plugged in and kind of parked near the chargers to show we're in line, another blue Model Y pulled in and sat here for a couple minutes trying to figure out if they should hang around and use this as a destination charger or move along. I think they saw that we were in line and decided to try to find another spot. But that just shows the need for, in these great destination locations, more level two charging is needed and just more EV infrastructure as a whole. You know, we're all happy to pay for it if, if needed, but um, you know, people are out and traveling and it's exciting. In a couple minutes, I'm gonna try to get a little better footage of the mountains. You can't really see it here through the camera lens, but they are gorgeous and we cannot wait to get up there hiking. Maybe even tonight yet, we'll see what happens. I guess the amount of sightseeing we get to do is directly proportional to how well we all as a community of EV owners share the level two charging and swap out as we need to. But I'm confident it's gonna work out fine and we'll all get to see the things we came here for. As if on cue, I wrapped up recording as the owner of the Taycan and his son came out to go to dinner. He was relatively new to EVs, but loving his Taycan so far. We talked a bit about the chargers and the fact that the front desk folks didn't seem to even know that they were there. I had thought about leaving my card under the windshield wipers so people could call me when they were done, but I didn't like the idea of touching other people's vehicles. I decided instead to put it on the charger, since they'd have to put the plug back anyway. Now that I had a spot, I changed the card to say when I'd be done and move the car, and to let anyone in an emergency know that they could call me to move sooner. This worked out well and no one called, but it kept me from being paranoid about hogging a space. If you've got a better method, I'd love to hear it. Both the Tycon owner and I were trying to come up with the best way. Ellie ordered pizza, but the DoorDash app was down that night, so after a very long wait, we just walked the few blocks to pick it up. Surprisingly, passing a Volkswagen dealership with two ID4s on the lot, not what I'd expected in northern Montana. With the extra long dinner time, we skipped hiking that night, and I took Joan to the hotel pool instead. While I edited the first teaser video, Ellie made a plan for Glacier in the morning. News to us when we started planning the trip was that Glacier National Park was limiting visitors on the going to the Sun Road, not just because of snow and the high points, but as a new practice, and we were supposed to order those passes six months ago. We had no idea, so missed that window. A few tickets were held back to be released at 8 a.m. two days beforehand each date. 
I'd spent the last several mornings refreshing and retrying as they sold out within 30 seconds to a minute. The system is terrible and frustrating, but I'll save that rant for later. The upside is if you could get in the park before 6.30 a.m. or after 5 p.m., you could still take the road. You could also access other parts of the park from different entry points, which was our plan. I talked earlier about the great North Dakota Tesla owners. Well, the Minnesota group is no slouch either. Tim, a friend from the club, was just wrapping up his family trip to Glacier and was super helpful in giving updates and advice while we made our plans. At 3 a.m., I got up and pulled the car off the charger and then back to bed. In the morning, the chargers were empty, so we topped up a bit more as we packed up and hit the road to Glacier. After getting into the park on the northwest side, we stopped by the Huckleberry Lookout Trailhead. It was pretty buggy and a longer hike than we could do with Joe. So after a little looking around, we piled back in and headed to the Apgar Visitor Center, parking there and walking to the village on the shore of Lake McDonald. This photo is the last known sighting of Michael's phone, but we wouldn't realize that until later. We were thrilled that Ellie was still able to rent a canoe and kayak, so we loaded up and had a two-hour paddle and lunch out on the lake. There was no wind, the sun came out, and it was the perfect day. Even despite the frigid water, Joan loved splashing and dipping her hands. Relaxed and back on shore, we realized the phone was missing and began backtracking and searching the areas we'd been. With no luck in the village area, we took consolation in ice cream and walked back to the visitor center to continue the hunt. No luck there either, so rather than attempt to get on the going to the sun road or exploring further south, we headed back to the north to check the trailhead and take a closer look at the river we'd driven by in the morning. No phone at the trailhead, but we did find a small gravel mountain path to drive up. It was slow going, but the view was incredible. We were hoping for a trail or lake at the top, but there wasn't much but a few backwoods campers before the road closed. We drove down again and back to the river. A little more splashing and playing, then it was time to head back to Kalispell for dinner. True to form, that also took a long time, but we found a city park nearby to enjoy the beautiful evening. The Tycon owner had told us about a place called the Ferry Steps, but they were in the cemetery grounds, which were closed for the night. Despite the missing phone, it was almost the perfect day and exactly what I've been looking for on this trip. 
Welcome to another beautiful night here in Kalispell, Montana. We are having just a fantastic time. Uh, this was our first full day here. Definitely being able to get on the lake made, a, made it a really special day. And for all the stats people, we got here yesterday with 10% and then we charged up to 85 overnight. And then no one was on the chargers this morning. So before we got rolling this morning, I, I put the car back on and got up to 95% before we left. Cause I was really concerned about elevations and distances. It's so hard to judge uh, distances here from the maps and you don't know how high you're gonna be going at each stop. So I really wanted to be you know, at that high state of charge. We drove to a Northern entrance to the park and looped back down and still had like 75% when we got to our first stop. So absolutely no worries. Came back that way, got uh, all the way back to Kalispell with 50%. I unfortunately forgot to take a picture of it, but um, that was after quite a bit of sightseeing. You know, obviously some elevation ups and downs there. And so we took the hit on the way up and got the benefit on the way down. I think I have it set to 85 tonight. Um, because we have to do whatever sightseeing we do and then get down to Missoula tomorrow for our hotel there. So just excellent day today and looking forward to more fun tomorrow. And unless something dramatic happens, I'll pick you back up then. We were so excited for the perfection to continue the next day, but that would be a whole different kind of adventure that could have spiraled out of control. But that's for the next episode, when we deal with those surprises, crisscross Montana, get Ellie back to the airport, and check in with the Well Done Foundation. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.